the question here again will be to find the centroid of the wire summary. You have a component which is formed by a wire which goes here, goes around like a circle, and goes up and it closes at the same point. <coughs> the first thing we notice is that the components here are what we call as the line elements or <coughs> wires where the, the pro predominant um, characteristic is the area of cross-section or in this particular case is going to be the length. So you use the length <coughs> as the main defining characteristic. Now, I can look at this problem by looking at different components. So again, this is x is x, <coughs> y and z. And we, we could think of this as three different wires. We could take this one here as, let's say, wire number one. I could take this and let's call this as wire number two. And then I could take this, I call this as wire number three. <coughs> So we're going to think of this whole assembly as three distinct wires. And let me make a table for this. <coughs> so in this case, we're going to take, let's say, uh, <coughs> wire one, then you take wire 2 and then you take wire 3. Then we're going to have three sets of coordinates for centroids. So let's call this as x, i bar, it's going to be in <coughs> millimeters. Then you're going to have y bar, that's another millimeters. Then we'll have third coordinate, that's also in millimeters. Then we got three comp products. First one will be, let's say, x. Um, we need one more column, so let's push this way back. This is li. That's also in millimeters. So that's <coughs> wire one, wire two, and wire 3. <coughs> then we have three products. So we need x, i bar, li. Then you're going to have y, i bar, li. Then we have c, i bar, li. So <coughs> we need, let's say, the length of the first wire. So if I look at the first wire by itself, then <coughs> if I just do a projection, um, <coughs> this is going to be axis x, this is going to be axis z, this distance here is 300, this distance here is 400. So that's how it's going to look. If you look through, or if you look along the y-axis. So <coughs> this triangle is easy to see that the length <coughs> L1 is simply square root of 300 square, 400 square, or 500 millimeters. 
that it's a <coughs> line element, which means its centroid has to be at half of its length. I mean, if the length was 500, then <coughs> this is going to be 250, and that's going to be 250 perpendicular. That's going to be x one bar, and from here to here, that's going to be y one bar. <coughs> Since this is a bisection of the length, these lengths going to be also bisect. Same is going to happen. This length is going to bisect. And I can safely say that x one bar is half of 300. That's 150 mm. It's an x o z plane, so y one bar is zero. Then you got z one bar. That's going to be 400 over two, or 200 millimeters. <coughs> So I can fill the first row, that's 500, then you have 150, then you have a zero, and then you have uh, 200. Now we try to do the same thing for the second one. So now it's be <coughs> Y, O, Z, and that's where you have the Y. And <coughs> this length here, is in 300 and the height is 400. <coughs> exact same thing that I apply here, it's length, that means L2. That will be square root of 300 square plus 400 square or 500 millimeters. It gives it the length and its centroid, which is C2, should be right at the middle of this length. So you're looking at 250 and 250. So coordinate is going to be this. This is going to be <coughs> x2 bar and this is going to be y2 bar. <coughs> so from that figure, so this should have been c. <coughs> we get x2 bar, that's half of 300, that's 150 millimeters. Then, <coughs> sorry, this is y2 bar x2 bar is 0 because the whole thing is in y or z plane. Then z2 bar is half of 400 or 200 millimeters. <coughs> so again on the table you get 500 for this, you get 0 for this, you get 150 for this, and a 200 for the z. That, take, that takes care of the two components, the uh, wire one and wire two. Then we're going to look at the third wire, which means we're looking at the plane. This time we're going to look at x or y. You're looking down at it in the z. And it's going to be a circular arc like this with radius as 300. So that, as I said, is the component number 3, your length. L3 is going to be 1 fourth of 2 pi r. 2 pi is the total circumference. You take the fourth of that, so that gives you 1 fourth 2 pi r was 300. So you get 150 pi millimeters. So that takes care of the length. Now how do we locate the centroid? And the first thing, I'm <coughs> see anytime you have a problem like this, see if there is some way to make it simple 
and in here I could draw a line like this where this is 45 degrees and that's 45 degrees and that's going to be the line of symmetry which means everything on this side is same as this side your centroid has to be on this line because if this is your axis of symmetry <coughs> so that's one conclusion and since this line is 45 and 45 I can say that x 3 bar should be same as y 3 bar I mean if, uh, if uh, on that line the two coordinates going to be the same the second thing is it's an x o y plane so your z 3 bar goes to now we need this length. We I mean how far it is from point O. Now to find that length, you again have to go back to the back of the book and you look at the diagram which is for a circular arc. I mean there is a 